Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control again, uh, bringing you another live show tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking about meal moths, carpet beetles, and grain beetles, and of course, you know, anything you guys might want to ask me any questions, I'm here to answer your questions too. Maybe we won't even get to the beetles, who knows. But uh, <clears throat> tonight, I want to want to uh, answer a few questions. A lot of people I've noticed, there's not really a whole lot of information on YouTube about these things. Uh, meal moths will get into your grain products, uh, dog food, bird seed, things like that. Carpet beetles like to eat carpet fibers. They like to eat, uh, you know, any natural type like cotton, wool. Uh, they really like animal byproducts. They like to get into leather. They like to eat, uh, if you have problems with mice, or rodents getting in the house and say a mouse dies in the wall or something and the leather that's left behind carpet beetles are attracted to that sometimes they come out of the wall grain beetles are attracted to you can actually bring them in your home in uh, rice they like to get into rice like to get into grits cornmeal things like that and so tonight I'm gonna be talking about those things I'm gonna show you a few pictures like I always do try to give you some uh, information on how to deal with these pests in your home now if you ever open like a box of oatmeal um let me think what else bird seed is like the most common way people will bring these in the uh, kind of looks like that inside like cobwebs all around inside the container oh uh, here i'll make that a little bit bigger so you can see it this is a really big picture but uh that webbing like that like a spider has been down in there and made a web but of course you see there's no spiders in that container uh what causes that is a meal moth now a meal moth see i think it's yeah it's behind that picture it's uh that's an indian meal moth is what that's called that is what makes that webbing inside your grain product they like to get into rice, they like to get into oats, they like to get into cereals. Any dried, uh, stored product that's kept more than a few months has the potential of having meal moths in it. What happens is the moth will lay their eggs on the dried product, typically wherever it's packaged, wherever it is uh, you know, manufactured. Um, usually these you know the grains and stuff it is washed which is why typically meal moths are brought into bird seed it's not as heavily watched they don't really monitor it like they do other things and you know birds they don't care if they eat a moth or not they don't care so it's not gonna hurt them in any way to eat bugs uh, like it may hurt you know one of us so they don't really monitor bird seed so a lot of times these will come in bird seed and then f people like to keep their bird seed. Sometimes they keep it right in their pantry. I've gone to homes where the bird seed bags have been sitting in the pantry and uh, they'll have it, you know, bundled all up. Like they'll just take it, just do like that and wring it all the way up. And then they'll take and put like a scoop in there or something. They'll open it up and scoop the bird seed out, feed the birds, and the meal moths have come in that. So. And of course, if it's sitting in your pantry, the meal moths will just move over into dog food or, you know, any dried product like like this, like oatmeal, like they have here, or uh, grits or anything that's dried that they can get into. They will chew holes through bags. They will chew holes like a lot of your uh, grain products are stored in a paper-ish type bag, not really plastic. Uh, I have seen them chew through plastic bags as well, so they they will get into the into those, lay their eggs in those. Typically, in the opened product is what they prefer to get into, and then they can chew little holes on their way out when they get out. The worms, the little worms, uh, a moth is you know they have caterpillar, they have a. Um, uh, they have a, uh, a larva stage, which is a caterpillar. The caterpillar is what spins all the silk. They're what make the little cocoons, and uh, they're or what is actually eating the grain. The meal moth itself is what's spreading their eggs around, and uh, you know they're the ones that are perpetuating the problem. They're they're spreading. They'll fly out. They'll get into other rooms of your house. You'll see them fluttering around. They'll crawl up the walls and stuff, and you'll see them inside your pantry. Now. What I, what I recommend to do to get rid of this problem is you want to take everything out. 
open the cabinets, take everything out of your pantry, uh, throw away anything that they've laid their eggs in, anything that you find this webbing in, like just like this, all this webbing-like material, anything you look in, you may not even see moths, you may just see those cobwebs, throw it all away, bag up your garbage, take it out, right then don't leave it in the house and allow the meal moths to get out of the trash so take all that out you treat inside your cabinets in the cracks and the crevices so that any product you put back of course wait for the cabinet to dry before you put your product back in your cabinets or your pantry or wherever it is that you store these things then sit your stuff back on the cabinet and then that way if there's anything like any dried product or anything that may have the eggs laid in it if the moths hatch out, they get into the treated surface and they die. And then, of course, it may take a couple months to get rid of something like this, you know, depending on how much stored product you have and how uh, how extensive the infestation is. And so, and that's, you know, you can do this yourself. It's really easy to get rid of these yourself. And so, uh, you know, I know I, the last couple videos, the one on bed bugs and in cockroaches, I, I pretty much advise people, hey, hire somebody. Don't try to do it yourself. It's very difficult to do it yourself. But meal moths, you can get rid of yourself. They're not that hard to get rid of. They're actually pretty simple. The hardest part is actually finding what they're living in. Even if you hire an exterminator, you're going to have to do that step anyway. Because, uh, I mean, I, I go in people's cabinets all the time. They give me permission. It's like, yeah, go ahead, toss that out, toss this out. And I'll do that for them. And it does save them some trouble, some time. But uh, like I said, these are pretty easy to get rid of yourself. It's, it's not that hard to get rid of at all. And so now we'll move on to uh, carpet beetles. <sighs> carpet beetles, I, I, they, ha they fooled me. Now, I, I forgot to put that picture in here. Let me put that picture up. What carpet beetles do is, is like I was saying before, they like to get into natural fibers. Um, they like to get into... Uh, mouse hides, rat hide, uh, leather, um, carpets, uh, any natural fibers, any old style like wool sweaters, um, and they eat holes in them like a moth does. Like not like meal moths, but like actual clothing moths. And I didn't include clothing moths in this title because most people just know what they are. They put out mothballs; it'll deal with them. Uh, mothballs will also kill carpet beetles if they're confined with them. And so, uh, you know, usually mothballs are something people will put like a little bag, like of cedar or mothballs or something like that, in their drawer with their wool sweaters uh, if they're storing them in like a cedar chest and. Uh, That'll get rid of the the carpet beetles or the or the uh, moths that eat your clothing. So that's usually what people will do. But uh, I'll tell you a story. Um, carpet beetles. First, I'll tell you, carpet beetles are very often mistaken for bed bugs. Um, very often. It's 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 actually I did not realize how often it was until I made the same mistake myself. Bed bugs, uh, they like to live around your bed frame, around your mattress, uh, your sheets and your comforters and stuff like that. So they'll get in your bed. Meal mall, oh, not meal malls, I'm sorry. Carpet beetles will do the same thing because they like to eat the fibers, especially if you have natural fibers, even if they're woven within uh, nylons and more, you know, synthetic fiber. It doesn't matter. The fact that the cotton or the linen is there woven into the fiber is enough to attract them. I know this uh, firsthand. Um, I did a bed bug job for a woman. Now, this has been probably two months ago, three months ago. And, and I'm sorry, my wife's sitting right here beside me. I may ask her a question or two. But, uh, there's always the risk an exterminator runs when they go into a home with, you know, roaches, bed bugs, moths, beetles, fleas, you know, anything, any bug that's in the house, spiders, anything, that you can bring them home depending on how heavily the house is infested. Um, I was in a home that had a very severe bed bug infestation. Um, there were thousands of bed bugs uh, 
crawling all over as I was doing the treatment. Now, the carpet beetles, uh, what happened is when I, when I got home, I was doing some rearranging of some bedrooms around the house. I was helping my wife move uh, some mattresses uh, to a different bedroom. And we have a king size mattress. I picked up the mattress and I started moving it. And my son, he's 12, was there with me. And he said, Dad, I think there's a bed bug on your mattress. And so I looked at it and it wasn't actually a live bug. It was a casing of a bug. Um, now, with beetles, uh, moths, uh, they go through they they'll they'll go through a larva stage metamorphosis like caterpillars and butterflies and cocoons and so the beetle uh the carpet beetle larva looks like a little worm and let me show you what they look like that's the larva now that's really small they are really really small now in comparison to a bed bug Oh, I for, that's the picture I forgot to put in here. Let me let me show you this. Oh, this picture here of this bed bug. Now, this is an adult bed bug side by side with a carpet beetle larva. Now, bed bugs are about the size of an apple seed. So, that gives you a pretty good comparison. Now, you see how small those larvae are there in the one picture on the left. Uh, now you could imagine how much bigger a bed bug is just pictured it right there beside those larvae. Now when these larvae grow into adult beetles they leave these little skins behind that look just like the larvae except they're clear, they're translucent so you can see through them. And bed bugs are the same way. As bed bugs grow up they have instars. They don't actually go through metamorphosis. What they do is they just get larger and they shed their skin. And they do that once every seven to ten days. They'll shed their skin after they have a blood meal. So when they're younger and they're quite a bit smaller than an adult, their skins get mistaken for the cocoons, the discarded cocoons of a carpet beetle. So what happened was my son pointed out to me, he said, hey dad, I think there's signs of bed bugs on the mattress. So I freaked out. I was terrified i was infesting my house with bed bugs they're not easy to get rid of even for an exterminator who lives you know i mean i have i have uh chemicals at my disposal wherever whenever however often i need them um it's they're very difficult to get rid of bed bugs are always difficult and while you're getting rid of them they're eating you alive they're biting you there um but what actually sealed the deal and made me believe I had bed bugs rather than carpet beetles was the fact that my wife was getting these little bites all over her arm. I mean, she'd have little bites up and down her forearms. And I was thinking she was getting bit by mosquitoes because in order to get to uh, half of the house, we had to go outside to get to it. And so I was thinking when we were traveling back and forth, she must have been getting eaten with mosquitoes because she usually does get eat pretty bad with them. They, they really bother her pretty bad. And uh, But then when he pointed out what he thought were bed bugs on the bed, I was like, oh no, well no wonder she's getting bit all over her arm. We've got bed bugs. Well, uh, that weekend I didn't get any sleep. Every night, if I had a phantom itch or something through the night, I'd wake up thinking I was getting eaten alive by bed bugs. And, of course, she was having the same problem herself. And so we didn't get much sleep at all that weekend. And then, uh, well, through the paranoia and deciding that we weren't getting good sleep, I decided to pick up the beds. That, uh, it was like a Sunday afternoon. Pick up the beds and check them. And uh, I actually found a live carpet beetle larva on the bed and realized that we had carpet beetles and we did not have bed bugs. On the same day, I decided to move her chest of drawers downstairs and in the middle drawer, of course, when I move a chest of drawers, you take all the drawers out so it's lighter, and I pulled her middle drawer, which is where she keeps all of her woolen sweaters, and there were carpet beetles in the drawer. And so I, what I believe was happening is the carpet beetles were attracted to the wool sweaters in her drawer. They were eating the sweaters in the drawer and they were just wandering around trying to find other places to live and that's what was happening to her. So long story short, it's really, really, really easy to mistake 
carpet beetles for bed bugs. I've done it. It's possible. Now that I know the difference, I don't think I will ever do it again, but it is something that happens. I have actually helped uh, other exterminators um, since that happened uh, properly identify the difference between a carpet beetle and a bed bug. So it does happen. Don't let it happen to you. It's very easy to have it happen. If you have an exterminator come in your home, check your home. Make sure you don't have carpet beetles, that you actually really do have bed bugs, or vice versa. Make sure you don't have bed bugs. You know, if you don't have them, you don't have them. There's a lot to killing bed bugs. It's real easy to kill carpet beetles. It's a lot cheaper to kill carpet beetles. You know, I don't know how exterminators price it in different parts of the United States, but here in Virginia, I don't charge, I charge a fraction of the cost to get rid of carpet beetles and usually you can get rid of them with one treatment and that's all it takes. Where bed bugs, it may take a couple treatments to get rid of them totally. So anyway, that's my story about carpet beetles and uh, now on to, let's see here, what else have we got here to look at? Um, let's look at grain beetles. Now this is a really tiny picture, so let me blow this up. This is rice. Now, I think that's good for comparison to show you how small grain beetles are. You may have seen these before. You may have gotten these in your house. Um, they can come in rice. I had a lady one time who brought grits. Uh, now, it's at home because I love grits, but she had instant grits. You know, little Quaker instant grit packs. They're uh, little, little cardboard packets, and they're, they're full of the grits. So, she stocked up on them because her husband loves those for breakfast. It's easy. She can take it, pop it in a microwave, have grits in you know a couple minutes, and he's eating his breakfast. And uh, so she bought. She went to Sam's Club. Boy, I'm my phone is going off now. Uh, I usually turn that off before I start this thing. But anyway, the um, she had brought a bunch of grits home from Sam's Club, and. Uh, ended up infesting her house. I'm going to turn this off because this thing is beeping over here. Let's see if I can get this. Sorry about that. just don't want to be interrupted. That's your dad, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, um, so she had bought a lot of grits home from the store and they had been sitting in the cabinet there was one box that had been sitting all the way in the back now she would get coupons and she would buy these things when they went on sale and so she had a pack that was way in the back it was actually expired she had forgotten she had it back there it had grain beetles in it they chewed their way out of those little paper bags and they filled her whole cabinet full of these little grain beetles and sawdust and from where they were eating the grits and uh they're really easy to bring them in the home because uh, people like to, you know, stock up on their stored grains and flour. They can come in flour. Um, they are also pretty easy to get rid of in the exact same way that meal malls are to get rid of. If you open your products and you find them in it, throw it away, get rid of it. Take your bag of garbage outside, throw it in the dumpster or in your trash can or whatever, and keep them from reinfesting. Uh, you wait until, of course, like I said, wait till your cabinets are dry. If you treat them and everything, wait till they're dried out, and then put your stuff back in the cabinet. Give it two or three weeks. Check your cabinet. Make sure no more crawl out. Uh, if you find more bugs in the cabinet, go through your product again. Check and make sure you didn't miss anything, and you well, more than likely you did, because if you still have bugs, there's still something in there that's that they're hatching out of. So you need to, uh, you know, go through your cabinet again. You may have to empty your cabinets two or three times to get rid of them, but trust me, it's worth it. You don't want them ruining your food. Money's hard enough to come by as it is. You don't want these bugs getting in your food and ruining your food. Uh, I, I once told a customer, I actually today, I, I uh, was at a lady's house. I was talking to her about stink bugs. I said, you know, I hate stink bugs. I, I really do. I can't stand them because I was making a pot of chili one time. And I'll save that story really for, uh, I have to do a stink bug video. But um, anyway, they, they, one of them flew in my chili, ruined my chili. And I said, you don't ruin my food. That, I'm, I'm fat for a reason. I like to, I like to eat. And uh, 
you go and you get in my food, I'm going to get pretty mad at you. So, you know, grain beetles, meal moths, uh, you know, things of that nature. You just don't, with roaches, you know, they'll get in your food. They'll ruin your food too. You don't want bugs getting in your food, ruining your food. And they're not, it's not good for you to eat them either. Now, I don't know, grain beetles might be all right to eat. I don't want to eat them. I don't want to test it out. I don't want to try it. Most people don't. And, uh, but anyway, I guess I hadn't really had very many questions. Let's see. Whoop, there we go. Had to kind of shift around a little bit. I, I do all my live shows on my laptop. So I'm trying to sit here with it on my lap, on this little lap desk here. And it gets kind of uncomfortable sometimes. But anyway, if there's any questions, you know, don't hesitate to ask. You don't have to wait for a question and answer session or anything like that. You could ask questions anytime during the video. If you, uh, you know, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate. Those that are watching. Um about anything you know if you got questions about cockroaches or fleas or anything like that how to get rid of things i'm, I'm more than uh more than happy to answer your questions but if uh you know i, I want to also take this moment to thank everybody for watching my videos i uh i get a lot of people looking at me and and because i'm a narcissist i like people to look at me <laughs> but uh anyway i i just i enjoy doing these shows i like trying to help people out anywhere i can um I'm hoping to do a video coming yeah, up you got here. Questions about oh, wow. or Why is that or thing anything? doing that? That ain't supposed to be doing that. Oh, uh, boy, that thing started talking to me. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, yeah, like I said, anytime you have any questions, don't don't hesitate to comment in the uh, comments below uh, this video after it posts. You know, those that are watching this, that it isn't live, you're you're more than welcome to comment and leave any questions. I try to answer all my questions. Of course, some of the things people try to troll me and stuff on on uh, YouTube, so I don't always answer every question. I try to get to every question as quickly as I can, usually the day it's asked or, you know, within a couple days anyway. I uh I did have my my father-in-law has been in the uh, hospital, so I I uh the last week or so I hadn't really been on to answer very many questions, but I try to catch up when I can. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on my uh uh on my website there, uh, greenacrespc.com. I've got several blogs I've written over there. I write articles every so often trying to give people information on, you know, uh, I actually getting ready to write one now on cockroaches I need to post. But, um, you know, all kinds of bugs, where bugs go when it rains, what happens when it's cold, uh, you know, all kinds of information like that. Don't hesitate to go over and check those out, read those, and ask any questions you have. And uh, I appreciate everybody. Oh, I also have a, a Facebook. You can go find me on Facebook, too. It's uh, Green Acres Pest Control, uh, LLC. We're located in Charlottesville and Lynchburg, Virginia. That's where we're, we're uh, local to both of those cities. And so we can travel back and forth between them. It's not that far of a drive, really. It's like 45 minutes between the two. And so uh, we try to service both of those areas. If you have any questions at all, uh, don't hesitate to call me. Don't hesitate to ask. Send me an email. Pop me a question over on Facebook. I answer those pretty much immediately. And uh, I hope I've answered everybody's questions and uh, helped you maybe get rid of some of these moths and beetles that you've been having problems with. And uh, oh, too, also, if you do have carpet beetles and you're wanting to get rid of your carpet beetles, uh, typical crack and crevice treatment is all you really need to get rid of carpet beetles. They will come out and die. They're really simple to get rid of. Um, it may take you, you know, I don't know, is, is, you know, someone like me, a professional, I can be in and out of a house maybe 20 minutes and, and take care of your carpet beetles and the one time's all it takes. So, uh, you know, I hope, uh, hope I've helped y'all like and subscribe to my video so you can get these little notifications. There is a bell up there. You want to click that bell so you can actually get notifications because it won't tell you when I'm live unless you do. So, uh... Y'all have a great day, and enjoy the rest of your evening, and coming up on the weekend here, so uh, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.